yeah, you. You might be comfy on your couch or maybe even your bed or just settled in at your desk to watch this video. But take a moment to find the closest window. Go have a look through it for a minute. Better yet, pause this video and go outside. Get some fresh air. I'll wait. Are you back? What did you see while you were outside? Maybe a tree, a hammock, possibly clouds or a bird. Maybe it was a nice sunny day where you are and you got to lay in the grass. Now sort everything you saw into two categories, living and non-living. So from my window, the trees and bird are living, while the clouds, hammock, and sun are non-living. Oh, and grass would go on the living side. Now your list will be different from mine. Maybe you saw a dog or a fly and put those in the living column. Or maybe you saw a river or a rock and put those into the non-living column. No matter what you saw, Everything can be organized into these two categories. In science, we have special names for these, biotic and abiotic. Bio is used in science to mean living. For example, biology is the study of living things. You may have learned in English, when you put an A in front of a word, it changes it to not or a negative. So abiotic means not living. If you had trouble sorting something into your columns, here's a tip. All biotic things have four needs. These are food, water, air, and habitat. Any biotic thing you can think of will need those four things. You yourself need food and water for your body to function correctly. Your lungs breathe the oxygen from the air and your habitat is your home, the safe place you live. Those trees out my window get their food from the soil and water from the ground to grow tall. They take in carbon dioxide from the air for their respiration. And their habitat where they live depends on the type of tree, wherever it's able to grow well and safely, such as palm trees grow where it's warm. An ecosystem is all the interacting parts of a biological community and its environment. So all the biotic and abiotic things and how they affect each other. These interactions you've already seen. Your dog, who is biotic, drinking water, that's abiotic. Or the rosebush, biotic, growing in the sunlight, abiotic. These are examples of interactions between living and non-living things. Take a look at your list of biotic and abiotic things you saw outside. Think about what interactions are happening between the two columns. That is the ecosystem outside your window.